according to the IDRC Shall I, I start? Can everyone uh, hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Ezekiel Lino from the College of Dentistry Lyceum Northwestern University in the Gupan City, Philippines. Today, I would like to discuss our research entitled Observed Adverse Effects Events of Various COVID-19 Vaccines Among Post-Vaccinated Healthcare Workers. The COVID-19 virus has caused the global pandemic that led to the mass production of vaccines, offering varied levels of efficacies and adversities. Pain at the site of injection, fatigue, and fever, among others, are examples of these adverse effects. Healthcare workers from around the globe have expressed experiences of adverse effects, but were unlike due to age, morbidities, and the nature of the work in the health industry. Dentists are at most risk due to the aerosol sprays from aerosol procedures and treatments offered in dental medicine, in surgery, dental hygiene, etc. For our objectives, we aim to distinguish the adverse effects of various COVID-19 vaccines from healthcare workers based on their experiences, demographic profiles, and the number of cases for each enumerated adverse effect. Our results show that from the foremost taken vaccines, majority of inoculated healthcare workers were females with 69.3%, while males were 30.7%. Most respondents vaccinated were 25 to 34 year olds with 42.1%. Majority have completed due two doses and mostly received Pfizer. Most respondents present no comorbidities. However, hypertension is most prevalent with 17.6% among our respondents. Finally, overall observed adverse effects from the vaccines were diarrhea, headache, and the injection site, fever, and fatigue. Our conclusion is that most respondents experience tolerable side effects like diarrhea, headache, pain at the site of injection, and fever. Diarrhea was most common among the respondents in all vaccines in this study. Our recommendation is to conduct further studies on the long-term side effects among fully vaccinated healthcare workers, including all brands of COVID-19 vaccines. We also recommend that studies should include a bigger population and a hematologic and serologic data among our participants. We now go to the tables um, results here. Table one shows the profile variables of our respondents with the female dominating, while 25 to 34 year olds are the most vaccinated age group. Table two here shows our common comorbidities from our survey, including allergy, asthma, diabetes, obesity, and hypertension, which tops the list of our respondents' most acquired disease. Table three here shows a cross tabulation of our vaccine doses received by the respondents with four vaccine brands. Pfizer is shown to have more inoculation than other brands and shows 60% with two doses. Table 34, on the other hand here, shows the other observed adverse effects of various COVID-19 vaccines, including having chills, followed by lip swelling and eye pain. Manifestations of difficulty in breathing, cough, colds, and sore throat in this study ad as adverse effects were due to the patient experiencing COVID-19 infection at the time of inoculation and survey. For table six to nine here shows the four vaccines and the first doses. Pfizer on table six shows diarrhea as prime adverse effects felt. AstraZeneca, Moderna, and Sinovac from table seven to nine shows a number of respondents experiencing diarrhea, but follows rashes and itchiness to the site of injection. Syncope, although high in number for the results, are inaccurate due to the language barrier in our survey and the respondents. Overall, the adverse effect pie chart here shows the summary of our respondents experience adverse effect. Diarrhea tops the list with 36% and followed by headache with 27%. Now, this figure shows and represents our respondents in countries wherein the COVID-19 vaccines were first made available. 305 respondents were gathered in the short time of the first quarter of 2021. We have also observed other observed adverse effects are uncommon in countries in northern regions of the world. Our respondents in Switzerland show a considerate amount of rashes topping the list of their most effect. 
This also shows the same for our respondents in Canada and the United States. However, for our respondents near the equator, it shows a different preference. Asian respondents show diarrhea as its most felt adverse effect. Now, this infographics are gathered from the World Health Organization website. Now, finally, I would like to thank the organizing committee of the IADR SEA division for giving us all participants the opportunity to speak about our research studies. And we hope that you will continue this platform for years to come. See you and stay safe always, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lino. Is there any question? Questions welcome. Um, uh, may I ask a question? What is what will be your future plan, research plan? If given the chance to give uh, give this uh, study more, um, I would go for our um, recommendation, which is reaching more um, um, a bigger population because we only did this for three months. So it would be more um, accurate if we had more time and more um, respondents from if if and include all of the vaccines that are available now and also of course we should also include the the booster shots which is more important right now okay thank you and center will be dr yu tami yes please okay thank you very much for this opportunity um Hello, everybody. I would like to uh, present uh, my topic. It's about inhibitory activity of Stachytera pathogenicensis follow root extract on some selected root pathogenic bacteria. And this study aims to determine the in vitro inhibitory activity of Stachytera pathogenicensis root extract or SGRA on some root pathogenic bacteria. And for the introductions, Stachytera pathogenicensis from the Fibonacci family is a white plant that grows in tropical areas such as Indonesia. And this plant is a wheat on agricultural land. A previous study <clears throat> proven that this plant contains several active substances that are essential in antibacterial, including saponin, tannin, and flavonate. And uh, we uh, use uh, some material and methods in this research. Uh, Stachytera pathogenicensis root extract using maceration process in ethanol 96%. And uh, the result of minimum inhibitory concentration or MIC and minimum bactericidal concentration, MBC, test using the micro dilution method. And uh, we test uh, this extract to some uh, mod pathogenic bacteria. There were actinomyces species. Agregibacter actinomycetes comitans and Enterococcus faecalis. And uh, we use uh, eight concentration of this extract, um, 125, 250, 500, 1000, 2000, 4000, and 8000 of this extract. And uh, the result we can see in this uh, value bar chart for uh, agribacter actinomycetes committants. Uh, the MIC, it was 2,000 ppm. And uh, for actinomyces species, the MIC at uh, 8 ppm, uh, 8,000 ppm concentration of this extra. And for uh, Enterococcus faecalis, the MIC, it was uh, 2,000 ppm uh, of this extra. Uh, the decrease in absorbance value indicates that antibacterial activity of SGRA uh, related uh, to uh, the compounds. There were flavonoid compounds, tannin, terpenoids, saponin, and phenols. Uh, the inhib inhibitory activity of SGRA uh, has uh, the maximum compound on the saponin. And the previous study said that saponin can act as uh, antibacterial uh, to some uh, mod pathogenic bacteria. 
and the several uh, but however the several uh, mechanism have been revealed for the antibacterial activities of some similar compounds to SDRA compounds these compounds diffuse uh, through the outer membrane and cell wall then bind to the cytoplasmic membrane and cause cytoplasmic leakage which result in cell death and we conclude that there was inhibition of SDRA on the growth of uh, this somewhat pathogenic bacteria meanwhile for uh, MBC values were not found at all these concentrations. So it is necessary to further test the Stachytapeta jamaicensis roof extract with higher concentration to obtain the MBC value against the bacterium, uh, some pathogenic bacteria. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yutami. Is there any questions for her? Okay, then, then let me ask again. Um, I'm not really familiar with the plants, and is there any, uh, will their plant be being toxic? How about the toxicity? Toxicity, okay. The previous study uh, have found for the leaf of this plant, uh, toxic for the pregnant woman, it can um, affect uh, blood, bloody uh, pregnancy. Uh, so why we choose the root of this plant? Because the compound uh, is different. Uh, there are some compound different with uh, the leaf compound. So maybe this plant has uh, less toxicity than the leaf uh, extract. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Then the next presenter will be me. I'm doing this. So let me, okay. Okay, then. Uh, Dr. Yutami, please stop sharing screen. Okay, it's my turn. Okay. Good afternoon, and this actual result is from a four years randomized control trial of a, a family center oral health promotion for pregnant mother, their husband, and their babies. And in 2014, we have recruited 580 families, and they were follow up when the mother uh, and the 32nd gestational week and their baby at age one, two, and three. Oral examination and the dental plaque collection for mothers. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Luis Anastasia, and I'm an undergraduate. And I'm an under. Uh, is that in? And I'm an undergraduate dental student from Trisakti University, Indonesia. First. Uh, line. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Hi. Hey. So. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Luz Anastasia, a final year BDS student of Trisakti University, Indonesia. First, I think we should know that orthodontic treatment is the in is interruption. The biggest dental yes, what, what what happened? Happened? It plays an important role in correcting people's smile. Um, but hello, technician. Can you help? Aesthetic benefits from big orthodontic appliances may worsen oral hygiene due to the placement of orthodontic bands and bracket that may render difficult oral hygiene, leads to an increase in subclinical flora Let's such see. as PG, which have specific genes that will further induce subclinical biofilm accumulation, oh. resulting in period inflammation. Hello, Hammy. Hello, Dr. Hammy. Appliances you hear me? require considerable care mm -hmm. and awareness to maintain okay. their oral hygiene and avoid the risk of periodontal disease. So, the aim of this study is to evaluate the effect of probiotic elbow care consumption on oral health indices and also analyze its effect toward dental biofilm associated genes in patients wearing orthodontic appliances. So in our research involved 20 subjects, we have used fixed orthodontic and appliances you not at her? least 12 months. And then we should be able to, to remove her. Antibiotics or probiotic for at least three months. Initially, all subjects received probiotic alimentary lozenges 
once daily for 14 days. Subsequently, to observe patient oral hygiene and periodontal inflammation, we examine and compare the clinical data of oral hygiene index and papilla bleeding index of all subjects that were taken before and after 14 days of probiotic interventions and to further validate the antibiotic mm. mechanism. Hello, Dr. Hallam. Can you hear me? Uh, okay, now <laughs> it's my turn again. Okay, let me start over again. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, this is the result of this abstract from a four years randomized control trial for the Family Center Oral Health Promotion for pregnant women. Hey, everyone, I'm Luis Anastasia, a final year BDS student of Trisafu oh. University, Indonesia. Let's know what time And maybe. Uh, sorry, Miss Luis Anastasia Halim, suaranya agak bocor, Mbak. Mm. Yeah, I, think please continue. I think we all know that orthodontic treatment plays an important role in correcting people's smile. But despite all these aesthetic benefits, fit or orthodontic appliances may worsen oral hygiene due to the placement of fixed orthodontic bands mm. and bracket that may render difficult oral hygiene, leads to an increase in subleaf flora. <laughs> Porphyromonas indifalis, which have specific genes that will further induce subindifal bifil accumulation, resulting in coronal inflammation. Therefore, patients with fixed orthodontic appliances require considerable care and awareness to maintain oral health. Is it okay? Now, okay, then again, again. I will further induce the brief. Can the technician help, please? Okay, now he, she's not talking. I think we all know that orthodontic treatment plays an important role in correcting people's smile. But despite all these aesthetic benefits, fixed orthodontic appliances may worsen oral hygiene due to the placement of fixed orthodontic bands and brackets that may render difficult oral hygiene, which leads to an increase in subignifal flora, such as partial monarch lingifalis, that will further induce subnifal bifil accumulation, resulting in peripheral inflammation. Therefore, patients with fixed orthodontic appliances require considerable care and awareness to maintain their... So you, can you ask help from technique team? Yes, I did, but she, they didn't respond. Yeah, answer. Okay. Therefore, the aim of this study is yeah. to evaluate the effect of probiotic albuterol consumption. But do you have... Can you remove, just remove Dr. Ruiz? Fantastic. No, I can't. No, I can't. You can't. No, I can't. But you are the moderator, but you don't have the privilege. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, now my turn. Good morning. This abstract results is from a four years randomized control trial for the Family Center Oral Health Promotion for pregnant mother, husband, and babies. It's a fact which dental biofilm associated genes in patient wearing orthodontic appliances. In 2014, we recruited 580 families and they were followed up at mother 30 second gestational weeks, their baby at age one and two. Our examination and dental pack collection for mothers, babies were delivered at all time points. 
once daily for 40 days. Subsequently, to observation oral hygiene and periodontal inflammation, we examine and compare the clinical data of oral hygiene okay. index and continue? index of all subjects that were taken before and after 14 days of providing intervention. And to further validate, But it sounds like when you start, she will start. I think yes, the recording. Can the recording. Yeah. I think she is like a plane recording. She said yeah. the timer and the plane the recording. Yeah. When you stop, she will stop. So I think we, we have to send a mail to to uh to the committee, send mail and ask for help. Or your presentation will be in the field and also the other, yeah. Okay, ho, 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 bye bye. Okay, shall we start um, the next one? Skip my first and then let's see if it works. Okay? Okay. Shall we, uh, let's, Dr. Lin, can you please start your presentation? Huh? He's not here, right? Yeah, yeah. Hello? Hello, yes. Oh, yeah, I'll represent Dr. Lin Huan Tai to show my poster. Oh, sure. Oh, yes. It's Dr. Lin Huan Tai's turn. Yes. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? I'll start. Yes, yes, please. Oh, oh thank you. Okay. Oh, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, I'll start. Uh, dear experts and colleagues, it's my great pleasure to participate in this conference. So my name is Chen Yuan. I'm from Sun Yat-sen University in Guangdong, China. Today, my topic is effects of small molecule on streptococcus mutants biofilm formation and the virulent gene expression. It is well known that Streptococcus mutans is an established karyogenic bacteria to cause dental caries. Thus, the aim of this study is to identify small molecules that inhibit Streptococcus mutans biofilm formation. In this study, we compared two small molecules, D20 and D25, for their inhibitory effects on biofilm formation, bacteriocidal effects on free-floating cells, and cytotoxicity on human gingival epithelial cells, and erode D25 owing to its bad performance. Then the morphological changes of streptococcus mutants biofilms were shown with microscopies. Finally, QRT-PCR was used to evaluate the expression of virulence-related genes. Based on our study, we firstly found that D25 were more potent. In figure one, we found that D25 had inhibitory effects against streptococcus mutants uh, films, indicating its selective properties. For the effects on free-floating cells, D25 did not impact did not impact Streptococcus mutants, Streptococcus sanguinis, and the Streptococcus gordonis cells at the tested concentration. In figure two, we found that D20 and D25 inhibited cell availability at 12.5 to 25 microgram per milliliters at 72 hours. 
combined with the figure one and the figure two, uh, we enrolled Z25 for the further investigation as, they, as it had bad performance. In figure three, we found that Streptococcus mutants biofilms were diminished via CLSM images in the presence of D25, but the inner structure of biofilms were not, not damaged in SCM images, and the single cells in biofilms were not damaged in AFM images. Finally, in figure four, we found that only IELA genes was downregulated. In summary, we could conclude that D25 would be a promising small molecule as antibiofilm agents. Possible mechanisms still need further investigation. That's all, thank you. Okay, any any questions? If there's no question, then I will ask a, a question then. Um, is there any ETE a TEM assessment to evaluate the change of bacteria after the small molecular treatments? For example, test, testing the um Membrane integrity. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you clearly. So did you did you do any TGM assessment for testing the uh, change of the tumor? Yes, I have done some TM tests. Uh, uh I spent uh, I done TM tests to find the changes of amyloid um amyloid fibrils. That's my uh my uh, that's my target for D twenty and D twenty five, but we haven't shown the results here. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doctor Chen. And then the next one will be Doctor Chao. Um, Is Dr. Chao Ina here? Yes, please share your screen. Why can't okay okay I see it. Okay, can you? Okay, you may start now. Okay. Mm. Good afternoon. My name is Ina Chao from the Hospital of Sun Yat-sen University. It's my honor to present my post here. The title of the post is Membrane Vesicles Improves Streptococcus Mutants Biofilm Formation. As we all know, one of the main uh, etiological passages of dental caries is Streptococcus Mutants, for short as mutants, which can form biofilm known as dental plaque and cause dental decay. As mutants utilize biofilm formation as a survival strategy to collect bacteria and persist against antimicrobial molecules. Although there is increasing information about the effects of bacterial membrane vesicles, for short MVs, on biofilm, few data are available on MVs generated by as mutants. The aim of this study is to access the effect of MVs derived from as mutants on biofilm formation. This research will increase our knowledge of as mutants and MVs and imply that it may have an important role in caries research. As mutants were cultured in BHI bro overnight to plant 
to platform stage. Then the MV was isolated from the culture. Tam was used to observe the form of MVs and found that they will violate membranes at approximately uh, 100 nm in diameter. The crystal violet assay was conducted to evaluate the alteration in relevant biofilm characteristic of mutants biofilm under the influence of MVs. The result of the CV assay show that MVs resulting increased as mutants bell says. The effects of MVs on live or dead bacterial ratio in as mutants bell film was assayed by the confocal laser scanning microscope. In the confocal micrographs, green indicates live cells, while red indicates dead cells. The image reflects higher green stand density in MVs groups than in the control group which means higher total bacterial biomass as a result of MVs addition. In figure four, the expression of uh, addition related genes include sucrose independent adhesion and uh, uh, sucrose dependent well investigated. The expression of levels of SRTA and SPAP in the bell film treated with MVs was approximately 1.5. 53 and 1.47 fold. The expression of levels of GTFB, GTFC, GTFD, and GBPB were increasingly increased by 1.61, 1.35, and 2.17 and 2.20 fold, respectively, compared with levels in untreated biofilm. In conclusion, as mutants MVs act as a component of a mutant's bell film, which can increase the bell film formation. This research will increase our knowledge of a mutant's MVs and imply that it may have an important role in character research. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chao. Is there any question for her? Okay, then, um, Dr. Chao, is there any... Uh, possible to apply those um, membrane ventricles to deliver other uh, fellow, PA, fellow, fellow, sorry, to deliver other drugs for, drugs for the oral health care. Is it possible to control those membrane ventricles? Yes, you mean that put something in the membrane vesicles? Yes. I think maybe it's possible because uh, in the, uh, uh, in bacteria, there's, there's no uh, this um, they have there, there's no experiment in bacteria, but the MVs from the cells, uh, there's many drugs that put some something in the exome. Yes, the MVs of the cells means exome. They put something in the exome and uh, use it as a drug. So I think it may be possible to put something in the astromutants and with, but uh, maybe it should have more experiment to do this. Thank you for question. Thank you. Okay, then the next presenter will be Dr. Wu. Sorry. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, my name is Yifan Wu, and uh, today I'm going to talk about the xylitol gum helps reduce chirogenic and periodontal plastic bacteria on dental plaque microbiota. Mm, and, uh, and about this work, the xylitol already been accepted as a safe substance to reduce dental caries. But however, only few studies have investigated whether chewing xylitol gum can decrease the oral inflammation. And in this study, we recruit the 24 young adults 
and divide it into the control group without chewing any gum and the xylitol group. And uh, the xylitol group should chew in the two pellets per time and uh, five times every day. And at least five minutes for each chewing until two weeks. And go to the result, we found the dental plaque was significantly decreased after chewing the xylitol gum for the two weeks. And not only carotidic, and uh, but also periodontal bacteria reduction after chewing the xylitol gum. So the so the conclusion: this third generation pet biofluorescence sequence pet phone can helps to evaluate healthy food effect in the future. Thank you. Any question? Any question? Oh, okay. Let me ask. Then why choosing the xylitol gum? Um, actually, we cooperation with the company. The company want to get get the healthy food. Uh, how to say the healthy food certification by the government. So he give them. They give the money to the <laughs> to the university to finish this research, and uh, we have the other discovery. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank. Thank you. And the next presenter will be Dr. Harlem. Um, hello, everyone. I'm really sorry for what happened earlier. <laughs> May I share my screen now? Yes. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. <laughs> So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Luisana Stekia, a final year BDS student of Tsukiaki University, Indonesia. And I think we all know that the treatment plays an important role in correcting people's smile. But despite all these aesthetic benefits, fixed orthodontic effects towards an oral hygiene due to the placement of orthodontic bands and bracket that may render difficult cleaning which leads to an increase in sub flora, such as porphyrin, that will further induce sub bifilum accumulation, resulting in periodontal problems. Therefore, the aim of the study is to evaluate the effect of probiotic lactobacillus rotary consumption on oral health indices and also analyze its effect towards dental bifilum-associated genes in patients wearing orthodontic appliances. So, our research involves 20 subjects who have used fixed orthodontic appliances for at least 12 months and never been exposed to any antibiotics or probiotic for at least three months. Initially, all subjects received probiotic alveolar lozenges once daily for 14 days. Subsequently, to observe patient oral hygiene and periodontal inflammation, we examine and compare the clinical data of oral hygiene index and popular bleeding index of all subjects that were taken before and after 14 days of probiotic intervention. And to further validate the antibiotic mechanism of L. Proteri, our lab has developed gene expression methodologies from the dental plaque samples. And now that the research were done, I have the data I need to conduct my studies. And this clinical study showed that probiotic intervention significantly improved both oral hygiene index and popular bleeding index in all subjects in just 14 days. So is it just a coincidence? No. In this study, we also proved the mechanism of probiotic alveolar in improving oral hygiene. So probiotic alveolar reduce key genes associated with PG biofilm formation. Basically, all of these genes support PG nephalis biofilm formation. So probiotic intervention causes low expression of USPA and HACB, which causes low capacity of bacterial attachment and inhibition of biofilm formation. 
follow expression of FIM-A and MFA1 suppresses the inflammation of parallel tissue. Accordingly, gene expression reduction of all of these genes indicates that probiotic lactobacillus suppressor inhibits the progression of parallel disease. The present study demonstrates that lactobacillus suppressor probiotic possesses a significant antibiofilm ability by inhibiting key genes of peripheral monoskingifalis, thereby improving the oral health of the subjects. These clinical findings show that polaritic lactobacillus suppressor consumption has a potential ability as an adjunctive perinatal therapy in fixed orthodontic patients. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any question for her? Hi, uh, I've got one question here, Louise. Yes, please. Yes, please. Um, do you have a control um, group here? Okay, thank you so much for the questions. Um, actually, this is a, a basic study for our methodonymic study. And since this is our very first basic study, we only do uh, pre and post intervention. So we only compare both. And actually, we also plan further research with the control group with the placebo. So there's no control group? For this research, we have a so how can So how can you justify that what uh, your findings is is um, not accidental findings, and it is true findings when there is no control. Uh, okay, so how can I justify that? Actually, we give our subjects instruction. So to make sure that there are no other intervention, we give them the instruction to do the same mechanical toothbrushing. We even give them. It's okay. It's okay, uh, Luis. Uh, basically, that um, we have to normally we would have a control group so that we know that whatever you found in the test group is actually um, being controlled with a group that has no inter there's, there is no um, fixed appliance at all. So yeah. that that is what I'm trying to get to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Then the next presenter will be Doctor Ratti. Hello everyone, I'm Gishia Khan Ratti from Prince of Songkhai University, Thailand. The topic I would like to present today is effects of synthetic loss on derivatives on streptococcus mutans perfume formation. This study aims to determine antibacterial activity of synthetic loss on derivatives, which are LME, 2A, 2B, and 2C against S mutants and that effects on birth information. Esmutan suspension was used at the concentration of 10 to the power of 5 CFU per milliliter in both experiments. For the first aim, rough micro dilution method was performed to obtain MICs and MBCs of loss on derivatives. They were tested at the concentrations which are serially diluted from 100 to 6.25 microgram per milliliter. And then, after we found the MIC of each agent, we performed crystal violet assay for the second aim of study. s mutans was inoculated in BHI with pap and sucrose containing various concentrations of blossom derivatives, which are at the concentration starting from one half MIC, serially diluted to one thirty second MIC. The incubation times were varied to 6, 12, 20, and 24 hours. Table 1 shows the MICs and MBCs of loss on derivatives against S mutants. Present inhibition of S mutant valve information by loss on derivatives at the concentration of 1 half MIC and 1 fourth MIC are shown in the figure 1. Present inhibition of 12 hour and 20 hour birth information by one half MIC range from approximately 84 to 98%. And the effect on 24 hour birth film decreased to around 54 to 83%. Present inhibition decreases with decreasing concentration of loss on derivatives. In conclusion, 
synthetic loss on derivatives, especially 2A and 2B, are promising anti carries candidates, which possess strong antibacterial antibodies against S mutants, and they still show satisfying inhibitory effects on biofilm formation at low concentrations. The effect on biofilm formation is time and dose dependent. Thank you for listening. Thank you. And the time is running up, so maybe we go to the other presenter, Dr. Kong. Please get prepared. Hello, is Dr. Kong here? Yes, hi. Sorry, let me yes, just hi. now. Okay. Okay, is this okay? Yes. Uh, okay, very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Kong Wei Ling, and I represent National Dental Center Singapore. Today, I would like to present my research project titled Antibacterial Efficacy of Contemporary Bioactive Dental Restorative Materials Against Streptococcus Mutants. Composites and glass anonymous cements have traditionally been the material of choice for tooth color restorations. However, secondary caries as a result of marginal leakage has been the common challenge faced by these materials. With the advancement in dental sciences, bioactive restoratives were introduced to overcome this challenge by forming calcium phosphate rich or epitite like layer at the tooth restoration interface, thereby neutralizing acids in this region. However, there is limited evidence of the antibacterial efficacy of these contemporary dental um, restorative materials. Therefore, the aim of my study is to compare the antibacterial efficacy of contemporary bioactive restoratives and conventional restoratives against S. mutants. So a conventional composite Filtech, a high viscosity GIC from Equifort, and three contemporary bioactive restoratives, including Joma, Beautiful, a zirconia reinforced GIC, also known as Zirconoma, and an alkacite material called Centon N were selected. Six samples from each material were prepared using a stainless steel mold and immersed in distilled water for seven days for water aging, after which they were sterilized using UV light. And biofilm quantification was performed using crystal violet assay and colony forming units count to determine the bacterial biomass and S mutants viability respectively. Surface roughness of the samples were measured at two time points with a profilometer. Immediately after fabrication and after exposure to the S mutant suspension for 24 hours. The results of the antibacterial effect of the materials were collected and statistically analyzed using Kruskal Wallace tests. Correlation between surface roughness and S mutant's viability were determined using the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. As for the results, we found from this study that the resin-based group, including Beautyfield and Filtech, reported the lowest bacterial biomass and S. mutants viability. Zirconoma and Equifort reported significantly higher bacterial biomass and S. mutants viability compared to Beautyfield. The same trend was actually observed in surface roughness measured at both time points. Equifort displayed significantly higher surface roughness values compared to Filtech immediately after fabrication. And surface roughness after 24 hours exposure to the bacteria suspension was significantly higher in zirconoma compared to Filtech and Beautyfield. A strong correlation was detected between surface roughness immediately after fabrication and S. mutants viability. So based on our materials, they can be classified according to two groups based on their composition. The risk-based groups consisting of Filtech and Beautyfield and the glass ionomer base group consisting of Equifort, Cention N, and Zirconoma. And based on the results we obtained, we concluded that the resin base group exhibited greater antibacterial efficacy compared to the glass ionomer base groups. And this was likely due to the cytotoxic effects of the eluted poorly polymerized resins at the superficial layer of the samples as finishing or polishing was intentionally not performed. Another possible explanation for the poor performance of the glass ionomer base group was the dissolution of fluoride ions from the GICs during the water aging process. 
Hence, the concentration of the flora ions released could have been less than the minimum inhibitory concentration for S mutants. And the higher surface roughness in the GI base group was attributed to the larger filler particle size. And this is congruent with multiple studies that have shown a positive association between surface roughness and filler particle size. I would like to end my presentation by concluding that the resin-based group exhibited greater antibacterial efficacy and lower surface roughness compared to the glass animal based group. As surface roughness showed a strong correlation to S. mutant's viability, it seems to play a crucial role in influencing bacterial adhesion and hence antibacterial efficacy. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kong. So let me try again and present to my presentation. Uh, yeah. Okay, again. Good afternoon. This research result is from a four years old randomized control trial uh, for the Family Center Oral Health Promotion for pregnant women, her husband, her baby in 2014. We recruit 580 families and they were followed up at mother's gestational week, uh, 32nd gestational week and their baby at one and two and three years old. Our examination and dental plaque collection for mother baby were delivered at all time points. I see this code system was used for clinical assessment while real-time P-cell was employed to quantify the uh, as mutant kinds in the plaque sample. The MS percentage in each sample was determined as the ratio of the MS to the total bacteria count. In the results, a total of 436 tortoises were followed up at age three and over 80% of tortoises at age one has less than 1% MS detected while more than a quarter and one third of tortoises had at least 5% of MS at their age two and three respectively. For caries detection, more than one third and 10% of tortoises has white spot lesion and cavitated lesion as H3, respectively. In these two graphs, you can see uh, the distribution of the MS according to both white spot lesion and cavitated lesions is shifting to the right, which means the asmutin percentage is increasing in the tortoise uh, over ages. Significant difference in the mean. MS percentage were fine between those with or without white spot lesion and cavitated lesions. Tortoises with at least 5% as mutant at age 2 had a significant higher chance of having early childhood caries at age 3, while no correlation between uh, MS percentage at age 1 and early childhood caries at age 3 was found. To conclude, the MS level in Dental plaque of tortoise was low at age one while increased over time. There was significant positive correlation between dental plaque as mutant of tortoise at age two and three and the early childhood caries at age three. Thank you. Is there any questions? Um, Dr. Yu, I have a yes. question. Yes, um, so in your study, you look at the quantity of a spread mutants, right? Yes. So if you were to do this study again, what other bacterial um, parameters can you also assess and correlate with the occurrence of uh, early childhood caries? Um, um, because uh, the... The S mutant as is the onset of uh the is the onset of the uh, early childhood caries. So uh now correlated liposystem will be another maybe another uh, consideration. And now in our research team, we are doing the NGS sequencing to looking at the uh the correlation of the Correlation of the S mutant and uh, and and the early childhood caries at age three in the more with a more concrete unit of of the S mutant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can also look at the genotypes and also the um, diversity. Oh, yes. Yeah, very good. Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And uh, this 
Oh. Um, Doctor, you can ask your question here. So um, yes, yes, please. In your conclusion, could you further elaborate the implication of your conclusion? You want to convince that the uh, should co mutant or increase with the age. Yes. From year two to year three, or it is oh, also as closely associated with the ECC onset. In this regard, did you also look at the sugar intake profile for the, each uh, the the uh, the kids? Um, uh, we have not. We we just do the quantification. We have not yet looking at the profile. Okay. How about the sugar intake? Uh, yes, the sugar intake, the sugar consumption, uh, in. The children in the toddlers as age two and three uh, is increasing. So there should be some correlation between oh, okay. the. Yeah, that's the... maybe interesting to in note you should highlight. <laughs> Thank you so much. And okay, three minutes left. And there was some question for the presenter. Uh, like for Dr. Wu, is it Dr. Wu? Did you see the chat box? There's a question. How can you confirm the effect of salatol is due to the biological effect of salatol? Mm. Hello, Dr. Wu. Um, okay, he's not responding. Then for Dr. Sorry. Let me, let me, yes, let me check a question, sorry. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I... The, the effect of the Zalito is based on the previous reference. So I remember I, I set the reference in the poster, so you can check. Yeah, thank you. Yes, and is, is it due to the increase increased library secretion? Yes, uh, based on the previous research, the during the Chewing gum, whether the zalito or sugar gum can increase the saliva. Thank you. Okay, and then a quick question for Dr. Chen. Can you please tell us why do the specific select small molecule for your research? Hello, Dr. Chen, who rep representing Ling Huan Cai poster. She's not here. Okay, then uh, let's end our presentation and thank you for the question. Uh, Doctor, you can ask a question here. So how about the okay. one more poster, Lin Si Kai, is it presented or not? Because that's in oh, uh, he's not, he, we cannot find him and he's not in the group, so, so maybe. So, not, so it means absent, yes? Yes, yes, he's absent. Okay, so, okay, that's fine. Thank you all for your participation. Thank you. Okay.